Uh, welcome. This is the unofficial welcome to SMWCon because it officially starts tomorrow. But today is the uh, is the tutorial day. Um, so um, it's recording, I guess. Uh, I I don't know if anyone from is is uh, watching this from WebEx, but hopefully everything works. Um, so we're going to talk about MediaWiki and Semantic MediaWiki. Uh, before I get to that, I, I'd set up a, a test wiki uh, that anyone can use and uh, it may come in handy later at smwconcarlsbad.referata.com. Uh, so you can go there already and uh, uh, register if you want and uh, you know play around. And basically, anytime I explain something here, feel free to, to try it out on a test page uh, or just try stuff out anyway. Um, so uh, my name is Yoran Koren. Uh, you're going to see a lot of me today, but not that much uh, after that, so, so it'll be okay. Um, I'm a, I live in New York City. I'm a, I'm a MediaWiki developer and consultant for the past uh, man, five or six years. Um, I run a, a MediaWiki consulting company called WikiWorks. You have heard I'm a sticker right there. Um, I, I've created a lot of MediaWiki extensions. The, the most notable one is also the first one I created called Semantic Forms. Um, and then via WikiWorks, I run uh, the, the, the Semantic MediaWiki based Wiki Farm Referata, which is where that uh, test wiki is being hosted. Can you guys hear me or should I yell? Very good. Okay. The thumbs up was good or more? Okay, yeah, got it. Uh, okay, so so I, I apologize if if this is uh, uh, old news to a lot of you. Uh, you know the basics of MediaWiki, but I'll just go quickly through this. Um, MediaWiki is an open source PHP based wiki application. Um, it was created in 2003 for use on Wikipedia. Wikipedia was using some some previous software before that, but they decided they needed their own thing. Um, and uh, and since then, it's really uh, taken on a life of its own. Um, right now, it's there's there's literally hundreds of people uh, developing the software and uh, working on all the extensions. Um, some uh, uh, a significant and growing number are are uh, paid by uh, the Wikimedia Foundation, but there's a lot of volunteers also. Um, and it's been uh, translated to hundreds of languages. That's one of the the, the really uh, amazing things about MediaWiki. Um, it has a. Oh, can I get rid of this thing? By Xing out, I won't. Yeah, that's fine. Um, MediaWiki has a duality, if you will. Uh, it's both the, the software engine that powers Wikipedia, which is a, a, an enormously successful and uh, uh, popular site, but it's also the most popular application for regular wikis. Um, and interestingly, the, the former tends to overshadow the latter. So it's an unusual case where the most successful application at something is actually, you, you, that's, that's the, the less interesting thing about it. Um, so, uh, well, at least to some people, not to me. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's very popular. It, I mean, any public wiki you go to, there's, in, in my estimation, based on a variety of things, I, I would say over 90% of, of public wikis use MediaWiki. Um, uh, within corporations and organizations, it's harder to tell. There's, uh, there's a lot of other competitors. There's the Confluence, um, SharePoint, and some open source ones like, uh, like Tiki and Twiki and stuff. Um, but I, it's certainly popular. It certainly has a large presence within corporations and organizations, as many of you know. Sure. Um, and it's also used by Wikia, uh, which is the, the, the highest traffic wiki farm. So as far as hosted solutions, it's also um, number one. Um, it's, uh, it's still being improved. It's still a work in progress. Um, some interesting recent innovations were that uh, the, the, the resource loader, uh, which I was talking to someone about earlier, um, it's a, it's a really nice framework for loading uh, JavaScript and CSS files, um, which makes things more efficient um, uh, and makes things easier for developers too, though in the short run it's, it's kind of a hassle to, to upgrade everything to that. Um, 
Uh, but that was just done last year. Uh, this year, actually, just a few weeks ago, they moved everything from SVN to Git, uh, which we may talk about later. There may be a lightning talk about that. I don't know. Um, so that was exciting um, for those of us who don't really know Git yet. Um, uh, and they're still working on stuff. Uh, a, a very important uh, improvement for the future is a visual editor, uh, which may be the you know the, the, the silver bullet, like a, a WYSIWYG editor that actually works for everything. Um, that's something that the Wikimedia Foundation is working on, uh, and it may they claim that it may be done by the end of this year. So we'll see, but uh, that could be big. And, and that's being developed for use on Wikipedia, but it'll be available for any wi other wiki as well. Um, Lua scripting, uh, uh, it's, I'm guessing 2013, just based on some stuff. But uh, I'll get to that later, what that actually means. But that, that, that could be really cool also. OK, so a brief introduction to wiki text. Um, this, uh, every wiki, almost every wiki has its own uh, syntax for, um, for formatting, and this is MediaWikis. Um, feel free to try stuff out on the, uh, on the test wiki if you want, if you've never seen any of this before, or, um, uh, or have only seen some of it. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's all of the important stuff. On, on this page. Um, uh, yeah, you can put HTML on wiki pages uh, to a limited extent. There's uh, some some tags that are allowed, like div and p and, and stuff, but uh, a lot that aren't. Um, okay, so namespaces. That's one of the really interesting things about MediaWiki. Um, Every page within MediaWiki is contained within a namespace. Even if you just create something like, you know, my my fun page, it's it's within what's known as the main namespace, which is sort of a uh, tautology or something. But it's uh, you know, regular pages are are, are just considered within the main namespace. Uh, any any user page uh, will have the user colon in the beginning of it. Um, and then there's uh, namespaces for categories, uh, images, and other files. That's the file namespace. Uh, templates. We'll get to to uh, most of these later. Uh, we'll, Media Wiki. We'll get to. Uh, special is interesting. It's different from the others because it defines pages that aren't editable. Uh, those are pages that are defined by the software itself. Um, so the you know, for instance, the recent changes pages. Is, is, you'll find it at special colon recent changes. Uh, and then every one of these, uh, these uh, namespaces other than special has a corresponding talk page, which is where all discussions about the contents of that page is supposed to go. Um, yeah, does anybody have uh, questions about this? Feel free to, to uh, raise your hand uh, or interrupt. Uh, your host has started an integrated voice conference. Yeah. Yes. Oh, does that mean I don't need to do Skype anymore? I guess so. Jesse, do you can, know? can you? Is there like a place where we can get the uh, WebEx information? Yeah, if you go to the um, to the the, uh, the the site, the SMWCon site, and go to this presentation, there's oh. a link there. Okay. So let me kill the Skype thing. I don't know if anybody was listening in on Skype. I thought more probably people are. I don't know. If anybody's listening in on Skype, please switch to WebEx. I guess I don't know. Um, maybe I'll kill Skype, but uh, it's happened before that have people written a column or something during a presentation. Um, why isn't this killing? Okay. So, oh, that didn't work. Okay. Categories, that's the other uh, main way of uh, categorizing pages besides namespaces. Um, with non-semantic media wiki, that's, it's, it's been really used and abused for a whole variety of uses. If you go to any Wikipedia page, you'll see you know, 20 different categories to describe a certain thing. Um, 
And it's basically what it sounds like. You, you tag something as belonging to a certain category, and then that category itself has a wiki page uh, that lists everything that's been tagged in that way. Uh, I should have mentioned this, but t categories can be subcategories of other categories. I mean, you can ca tag a category as belonging to another category, and then uh, you can create a whole hierarchy of uh, pages that way. Uh, templates. So this is something, this is a really cool feature of MediaWiki and it's used uh, we, uh, um, in conjunction with Semantic MediaWiki quite extensively. Um, uh, I don't know if it's unique to MediaWiki, but it's definitely, it's definitely really cool. Um, the basic idea is quite simple. Uh, these are pages contained within an, the, the namespace template and you are meant, you transclude them into other pages and then they also um, have a set of parameters that you can pass values into and then they get placed into that thing. So they function like macros, I guess is a standard term for that sort of thing. So let's give an, uh, an excellent example. I created a template called pluralize that says uh, the plural of word is words. So you pass in a value for word and it tells you what the plural is. And uh, this works every time, by the way. It's great. Um, so you, um, so, so then on another page, oh, I messed it up. That should be two brackets, not one. Should I change it? Oh, well. Ah, oops. I should not have done that. Um, OK. Uh, so and then on another page, well, it, I mean, you can do it on the same page, but I, it, oh, that didn't work at all. Um, on another page, you would, here we go. Um, you would pass, you would call that, and then it just displays the thing you see at the bottom. Um, except it would be lowercase h. Oh my god, so many errors. Uh, I guess that's all I have for templates. Uh, we'll get to it quite a bit uh, uh, later in the, the next talk about uh, forms and all the other stuff. Uh, redirects uh, are cool. They're used uh, quite a lot on Wikipedia. Um, basically, when you when you it says when you go to this page, just send the, the reader over to uh, the next page. Um, that's useful for for synonyms, um, misspellings, and content subsets. Like if you don't have an if, you know, on Wikipedia, if a certain book is not notable enough, then if you then there'll be a page for that book that just redirects to the author. That sort of thing. I think those are the three main usages of, of redirects, if I'm not mistaken. Um, images, uh, yeah, you know, there's a whole syntax for displaying images on a page, and I, I still don't know how to, how to any of this by heart. I always just copy uh, image tags from somewhere else, or file tags now. Um, yeah. The thumb one uh, puts a thumbnail of the image. Yes, it question. Is, uh, about the redirection. The redirection can be only within a wiki or another wiki. It cannot be a URL like beginning by Oh, yeah, no, it's it's only two pages within that wiki. Yeah. Within or uh, using uh, their wiki. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, definitely allowing to redirect to any arbitrary URL could lead to. Strange behavior. Um, so that's that's it for images. I don't even oh I I don't think I even mentioned in this talk how to upload files. But basically, the, in the, the standard sidebar, there's a there's a link to an interface for uploading files. Um, yeah, the one thing I'll, uh, other thing I'll say about files is um, when you upload a, an image or other file, it it uh, both exists. It both gets uploaded. Um, as you know, a, a, a file and also a page is created for it in the file na namespace, and those um, those are you know interlocked. Um, um, yeah. Okay. So we have um, there's dynamic pre-programmed elements uh, that are defined both by Core Media Wiki and by any extensions. Uh, there's four kinds, and I'm sure you've seen. Um, some or all of these before. Um, parser functions, tags, variables, and uh, I don't know if, I, I guess they're called behavior switches, and I'm not even sure if that's like a standard name for them. But we'll, we'll, let's get to each one of them. Um, 
uh, okay, so so the function name actually looks a lot like a template call. Um, basically, you know, you pass uh, to it again as with the template, you pass to it a set of values for parameters, uh, and these can also be unnamed parameters. Uh, a function can be defined as just passing in value one, value two. Yes. You will be giving some more examples of this, right? Yes. Um, Although maybe not as many as I should have, but um, uh, so 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 uh, um, a really important extension is the parser functions extension. It's probably it's actually probably the single most important MediaWiki extension um, that defines functions like if if is is the most important one, but there's there's a bunch of others that are similar. Um, uh, basically, any, anything to it, it, it implements a, a sort of a quasi programming language that you can have within templates. Um, so, for instance, you can say if this parameter wasn't passed in at all, then don't even display this row or that, that sort of thing. Um, um, it's since last year or two years ago, or actually, it's been three years, uh, it has also included the contents of what used to be known as the string functions extension. Now they're both in parser functions, uh, and that has a bunch of uh, cool string handling functions. Like you can take a, you can take a substring of a string and that sort of thing. That's useful for a variety of purposes. Uh, and then a lot of other extensions define their own functions, including Semantic Media Wiki and uh, some of the other SMW-based extensions. Uh, why do I have two slides? I think this was a mistake. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, yeah, so if you've ever looked at a template in Wikipedia and uh, thought you were looking at, at noise, um, it's probably due to uh, the, the use of if and, uh, and similar functions. This is an example, I don't know if you can see this, but I just found an example of, uh, from one template of the, uh, the kind of stuff that shows up. Uh, there's something involving parts, I don't even know what they are, but it actually goes, you know, you see P1, P2, et cetera, it goes all the way until 50. Um, so, so, yeah, this is a, this is a hack. Um, there's a project in place now to use a scripting language called Lua, uh, which I, I don't know that much about, but, uh, you know, I, I can make some assumptions based on the fact that it's a scripting language, but the, the, the idea is that it will make things like this a lot nicer because templates will look more like a, a, um, a piece of code uh, that's split up, uh, where it's easy to tell what is, the, you know, programming code and what is the actual display. Um, so, for instance, this thing all the way up to until 50 will presumably can presumably be replaced by a loop. That's a lot nicer. Um, so just one one specific hack, you know. In the meantime, because uh, uh, you know everyone's still using if and all the rest. Um, uh, this is a, a, a really probably the single most important media wiki hack, uh, which is the, uh, the I don't know what to call it, the exclamation point hack. Um, what what happens a lot of times? You, what you want to display within if uh, functions that sort of thing are pipes uh, because it, it involves. They're, they're used quite a lot in, in creating tables and all that kind of stuff. So um, the problem is, if you just pass in a pipe, it looks like a parameter separator, so if gets confused. So what you have to do is create a template called exclamation point. I mean, you can call it whatever you want, but that's the easiest thing. Um, that contains just a pipe, and then you put that in instead to have it do something like that. Does that, does that make sense? No. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably simpler than I did. <coughs> made it out to be. Okay, so the next thing after parser functions are tags. Um, they look like HTML tags, but they're different because they're parsed by MediaWiki. Uh, the, the browser doesn't even see them. Uh, these are some of the important tags. No wiki, no include, include only. Uh, ref you see a lot on Wikipedia for citations. Um, uh, yeah, so here's an example of no wiki in action. Uh, if you want to actually, if you want to not have the, the media wiki parser, why is this shaking? Oh, it's this. If you want to not have the media wiki parser uh, parse something, then you put no wiki around it and then it shows up that way. 
I guess I should have gotten to no include and include only. Those are used quite a lot with these templates. <coughs> the basic idea is uh, no include, if you want to put any documentation about the template within the template, uh, you put no include around it so that it doesn't get placed uh, where the template is called. It only shows up on the template page. And include only is the other way around. It only gets uh, uh, transcluded. It doesn't show up on the template page. So if you go to just about any template page, you'll see those too. Variables. Um, these look like template calls, but they're different. They're predefined. Um, the most common ones involve the, the name of the page in some way. The page name is the big one. Uh, but then there's uh, you know other extensions to find their own. There's an extension that called variables, I think, that lets you define uh, additional ones, like for the. Right, there's two. There's one that comes predefined with like current user and stuff, and then there's another that lets you define your own. And they're both called variables. I'm not sure. Uh, finally, behavior switches. You have the, the double underscores around something. That's uh, that's uh, what that does is it it tells the parser to do something. Uh, and then these do not actually get displayed. So if you, uh, the, the, the single big, uh, most important one is no talk or no TOC, which hides the table of contents. Uh, there's also no cache, which is really useful if you don't want a certain page to get cached. Uh, I didn't talk about MediaWiki caching, but uh, this, 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 you see this issue a lot, when, uh, especially when using semantic MediaWiki. I guess I'll get to it later. Basically, MediaWiki does a lot of caching at every level, uh, including the, the display of pages. So chances are good that if you're looking on a, at a page, what you're looking at is a cached version as opposed to it having reconstructed that page at, uh, when you're looking at it. OK, so there's a whole lot of MediaWiki extensions. Um, what are we doing on time? Okay. Um, there's, uh, there's hundreds, I believe. Um, uh, since the since the the current uh, stable version 1.18, there have been seven that are included uh, directly into MediaWiki if you download the whole thing. So these are considered you know these are considered the most important at least by the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, uh, I, I guess yeah I guess I should just talk about all of them now since I won't get to them later. Confirm edit is super useful against spam. Um, anyone who runs a, pu a public wiki is in constant danger of getting hit by a spam. Um, and they seem to have gotten more brazen in the last six months to a year or something. So I assume that situation is not going away. Um, uh, just briefly about confirm edit, I've tried all the different anti-spam uh, uh, modules that it has. There's uh, six of them, I think. Um, the one that everybody likes is called reCAPTCHA. It's it's uh, it's produced by Google and it, it lets you um, it uses digitized old books, so you're actually doing a favor to the book digitizers of the world by using it. It's great. The the problem with it is it's it's it was it's been broken. It's been cracked. I mean, um, it's it's not very effective at all against spam anymore. Um, so actually, my two favorites are uh, our Questy CAPTCHA, which just uh, lets you just create questions and then people have to answer them. So you can say like, you know, what, uh, what color is the sky or something. Maybe that's too hard. Uh, uh, but you can even, even simple questions are, are usually enough to, uh, to um, uh, evade any spammers, at least for a while. And then you can switch the questions. And the other one I really like is called Asira, uh, which you can see uh, is, is in use across Referata. So if you try to log in, on Referati, you can see it in action. It uh, you have to choose just the pictures of cats uh, between a set of pictures of cats and dogs. Uh, it sounds ludicrous, but uh, but it works quite well. Um, uh, so uh, okay, so that's confirm edit. That's 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 extremely useful for any public wiki. Um, gadgets, I I won't really get into, but it, it lets you create uh, JavaScript utilities for people to to use like. If like if, if you hover over a link, then it shows a preview of the contents of that link and that sort of thing. Um, Nuke is great, again, also against uh, against vandalism and spam. It just deletes a whole bunch of pages at once. Parser functions, I, uh, I already described. Uh, rename user, renames users. It's something that should be in core media wiki, but it's not. Um, um, 
Vector and Wiki Editor together uh, are new. Uh, they both came with the Vector, the, the, the um, creation of the Vector skin, which I think was in 2010. Um, Vector is specifically for the Vector skin. Uh, it's not used that much. It's, it's, it gets used well on Wikipedia. It lets, I mean, the single biggest thing it does, in my opinion, is that it uh, provides a warning prompt if, um, if someone leaves a page that they're editing and haven't saved. Uh, that's, that's useful for a variety of, oh my god. <coughs> my subscription is <laughs> no, Please nobody, nobody hack my laptop. Um, yeah, so that's useful for, uh, I, I think a lot more wikis should be using Vector and those uh, enhancements. Uh, and finally, Wiki Editor is the editing toolbar that you see on Wikipedia if you go to edit any page. It's, it's just a lot nicer than the standard media wiki one. Um, a lot of people use that one. Right, uh, customizing display text. Um, what's another... A really interesting thing about MediaWiki is that every um, every piece of text that's shown to the user can actually be modified by you, the administrator, uh, or someone with administrative access. Um, so, for instance, the sidebar is just defined by a page within the wiki. That's probably the the the, the customization that most people make. Uh, you can change the name of the main page. Um, you, you, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Copyright warning you can change, you know, to um, to not be as verbose and that sort of thing. Uh, maybe I should give a demo of this. I don't know how much demoing I should do for any of this stuff, but um, if I go, well, let, let's see what's going on at SM, uh, SMWCon Carlsbad. Uh, so, uh, okay, so what you have here, MediaWiki site, so now if I go, if I do use lang equals, what was it, qqx? Um, you can already see here, page title is the message of the, uh, that represents the, the title of the page. Um, that's a little slow. Um, yeah, and, and by the way, you can set the language to anything, so you can set it to you know, French or Spanish or, or one of the hundreds of languages. Uh, so, so this is really helpful. Uh, you, you can, if you go to MediaWiki colon any of these things, you can change the, the value of that message. Uh, let me just show it, like, here we go, Chinese. Uh, oh, and then, by the way, speaking of customization, oh, I guess we'll get to skins later. Yeah, we'll get to skins later next time. So anyway, I'll give this another five seconds. Okay, there we go. See, oh. Oh my God. Sorry. Okay. Um, hopefully you saw that for the like microsecond goes on. Um. Uh. Okay. So you can also set the um, the, the the appearance of the overall uh, wiki. By, uh, by changing or, or better yet, creating a new skin. Uh, the default MediaWiki skin is called Vector. I think it's, it's great. It was the first skin that was developed uh, using, with actual user testing and with graphic designers involved. Um, uh, so it's a lot better, in my opinion, than any of the previous skins. Uh, there's also eight others that come bundled in with MediaWiki. Uh, and there's a whole bunch that you can download from other places. Um, New, yeah, you can also um, you can create new skins, and a lot of people do. It's it's a it's a challenge, uh, just because it, it you need to maintain the skin. I mean, uh, just about with every new MediaWiki version, there's some changes that will make your skin look weird unless you make those corresponding changes. Uh, so um, I didn't mention this here, but but my preferred approach is to. Um, is to start with an existing skin and, and modify it and try to restrict changes to the CSS file or mostly to the CSS file. That just makes it easier 
to uh, upgrade, because then you can just, you know, start again with the new version of Vector or, or Monobook or whatever it is that you're modifying and uh, work from there. Uh, but thankfully, it's easy to tell when something's gone wrong, so, you know. Uh, it's not like weird things will keep happening for the next six months after you upgrade or something. Uh, right. Oh, oh, yeah, so I wanted to show... Where's the... Um... Oh, yeah, okay, so... So actually, the uh, Rough Rider comes with a bunch of other non-standard media with these skins. So there's a, if you do use skin equals at, in, in the URL, you can see any skin. So there's one uh, kind of nice one called Clean and Blue. Uh, oh, by the way, the, uh, the, yeah, the, the default skin on Referata is something called Vectorata, which is uh, a lot like Vector, but it's different colors and stuff. Um, yeah, so there's, here's one called Clean and Blue. So that's the idea. Uh, yeah, read and write access control. This is something a lot of people ask about uh, because people are used to, uh, you know, people like to use MediaWiki for the roles that a traditional CMS does in terms of managing content and you have, you know, your different islands of content, different people are supposed to deal with different sections. Um, so there's two different things which are which are really quite different from one another. There's there's write access and read access. Write access is just a lot easier to deal with all around. Um, if you're an administrator, you'll see you can you'll see the protect tab or the protect drop down act action depending on your skin on any page. So you can just protect a page, um, and then you can set it so that different user groups can access it. Um, there's the, then several extensions like Lockdown that let you do that per category or per namespace. I think Lockdown only does it per namespace, but there's others that also do it per category. Um, uh, and then finally, you can do a, a nicer version of write access control uh, where everyone can still edit a page, but uh, it won't, their changes won't show up to, to you know, regular readers until it's approved by someone. Uh, there's two of them, flagged revs and approved revs that do that. Approved revs is supposed to be the, the flagged revs is the one used by Wikipedia. Uh, approved revs is supposed to be the much lighter weight version of the same thing. Um, and I think that's the more, if there's a certain, if you subscribe to the wiki philosophy of, uh, you know, of openness and so forth, I think, that, I think that's the nicer way to go. Because, you know, anyone might have a good contribution to some page. Um, read access, that's, uh, that's really tricky. I mean, this gets into, if, into some dicey things. Uh, if you have really sensitive information, it's generally never a good idea to trust uh, any software to protect it, um, uh, you know, unless you're really confident about it. Um, MediaWiki especially was never designed with read access in mind, with uh, controlling read access in mind. Um, there are the, and there, there are holes in security. Um, one notable extension to that is the Halo a ACL extension, which you'll uh, hear about uh, later, which, which I, I'm told has plugged all the security holes. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely worth looking into. Um, yeah, in, in, general, in general, I would say, you know, exercise caution. Um, Okay, so that's MediaWiki. Uh, we're going to Semantic MediaWiki, so to transition to that, let's talk about the Semantic Web. I, I believe we have some actual bona fide Semantic Web experts here, uh, but uh, please humor me. Um, here, uh, uh, you know, Semantic Web gets a lot of buzz and, and some amount of VC money, but. Um, at its heart, it's basically about triples, if you want to look at it that way. Um, a triple is a, um, is a set of three things. It's basically a, a, a sentence that describes some aspect of the world. Um, the, it's traditionally called subject, predicate, object. So California has capital Sacramento, um, is, an, is a good example of a triple. Um, to be technical, what's sometimes stored is quads, where you also have a fourth thing saying, this information came from 
X, Y, Z, uh, or this was stored at time, uh, whatever the time was, and that, that sort of thing. You know, you can, you can have a whole bunch of data about that fact. Any, any semantic web people uh, want to disagree? <laughs> All right. Um, I have a question. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not a semantic web person, and so please take a look at the great assault. I thought that the fourth item was like the graph that this thing belonged to. Yes. Uh, you might be right about that. I think that's one, that, that's one, uh, one way to express that. I mean, at heart, it's sort of the same thing. It's a way of, it's like, I guess, a way of explaining where the, what the context of this of it's the like you thing have a bunch is. of properties for a person, but it's almost like a namespace, I thought. Okay. I don't know. I think it's used in many ways. Okay. What? It's used in more than one way, which I think it should be. Okay. Um, Uh, and this stuff is still undergoing, um, undergoing uh, changes. In, uh, uh, yeah. Um, so okay. So we have some technical terms here. Um, RDF. Uh, you, you probably hear a lot um, uh, when dealing with semantic web. It's a uh, stands for resource description framework. It's uh, it's just a general framework. It's not it's not any specific data format. Um, uh, that's why it's not called, you know, format at the end, for storing uh, semantic triples or quads. Um, uh, then there's RDF XML, which, uh, which is a specific file format that you can use to store RDF data, and Semantic Media Wiki can export all its data in RDF XML. Um, uh, and then finally there's OWL, which is a superset of RDF where you can also store Metadata, you know, information about the data structure in the same place. Um, and then finally, there's Sparkle, which is the Sparkle protocol in RDF query language, formerly simple. Um, it's not simple anymore, I guess. Um, so uh, it's it's actually used for both. It's a lot like SQL in that it's both you can both query and modify RDF data. Uh, so it is like 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 SQL for the semantic web. Um, uh, and the thing I didn't mention was RDF triple stores, uh, which I should have, but um, uh, basically an RDF triple store is like a database, and uh, uh, some of the same people who make RDF triple stores also make databases like Oracle, um, I mean relational databases rather. Um, yeah. So another question, previous yeah. page. Okay. Um, so the RDF XML is a file format for storing RDF data yes. and, sema and uh, um, the semantic uh, media. The semantic uh, uh, the the uh, media wiki can export to RDF XML. Yes. Um, does it export to any other uh, notations like Turtle? I don't know the answer to that. I don't think so. I feel like I would have heard of that. It can, however, export or store its data in an RDF triple store, uh, and from that, presumably, there's a bunch of ways of, uh, of uh, you know, exporting and displaying that data. Um, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So, an RDF triple store is basically, you know, you can think of it as a database with as one uh, with three huge columns of, you know, just or four, I guess, storing uh, all this. Uh, RDF information. Um, okay, so I guess we're. I guess that was it for our, for the semantic web talk. Um, semantic media wiki. How are we doing? Okay. Um, uh, semantic media wiki is a media wiki extension uh, developed originally by uh, Marcus Kruch, Denny Vrandicic, and a few other people in uh, in two thousand five, um, and uh, they actually they they developed it. To, to in order to uh, give a talk about it at the first Wikimania in uh, in uh, Frankfurt, Germany. Um, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be it's it's been just about seven years since it was uh, originally created. Um, the current main developers are Marcus and Jeroen Dedau, who's back is sitting in the back there. Um, <laughs> We, we 
have a celebrity in our midst. Um, so, um, and, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm one of the, the lesser developers of it. Um, it's in use on, uh, on uh, my guess is 500 to 1,000 active wikis um, based on the number of public uh, wikis and then extrapolating from that. Um, uh, and there's over 30 spin-off extensions. Uh, uh, which we'll, and we'll get to a bunch of those later. <clears throat> okay, so what is Semantic Media Wiki all about? Um, it's, uh, it, it, at, at its heart, it provides these two uh, tags um, for storing uh, properties and values. So you say property name, colon, colon, value, or set with the same, same idea. And that just defines the uh, a semantic triple where the first element is the name of the page that you're on, which is always the case. You can't, uh, well, except for some, some uh, an in internal objects, which I'll get to later. But generally, this is what happens. Um, so you know, if you're on a page about uh, California and you put, you would put has capital California. Um, the difference between these two is that the first one also displays the value on the screen, while set it is a does a silent uh, annotation. It doesn't uh, display anything. Okay, so that's, uh, that's you know, the standard uh, description of Semantic Media Wiki, but actually, in almost all cases, I would say 99%, um, semantic properties are, are actually stored within templates. Um, so you'd have something that looks like this. So, you know, this is a, a table syntax for, uh, oh yeah, I didn't mention t table syntax in the wiki text thing, but this is, what, this is how you define a, a, a table. Um, uh, so you, it, it takes in a population uh, within the, the population parameter and then sets, uh, sets a property to that uh, and also displays it. Um, so, so, you know, if you go to any Wikipedia page and you see the info box there, maybe I should show an example of that. Um, um, they're used all the time in, uh, here we go, on Wikipedia, and um, also extensively in, in Semantic Media Wiki base sites. So we have this whole info box with all this great information about it. Um, so the idea is you can store all of these uh, via semantic properties, and actually one day Wikipedia will store all these via semantic properties, but that day is not today. Um, um, so, um, so that's, that's, you know, that, that, that's, this, that's the basic uh, mode of usage of semantic media wiki. Um, so yeah, we have these properties, um, but they can hold different kinds of data. Um, <clears throat> So actually, in in very wiki, a wiki-like way, each property has its own wiki page, which is within the namespace called property, um, and there you define the type. Um, so the most the two most common types are string and page. Um, string is just a standard string; uh, it has to be within 255 characters, I think. Uh, page is the name of a wiki page, so it's displayed as a link. Um, uh, if you need a, a very long piece of text, like something in, a, in an unbounded text area, then you'd use the text um, uh, uh, the property type. Sorry, uh, and then uh, these others just you know have the um, have the properties that I guess you'd expect of them. Number can only take in numbers. Date can only take in dates, etc. Boolean just means it's true or false. Um, uh, and then you can have uh, enumerations um, using allows value. <clears throat> so if you know that something can only take in a specific set of values, you can you can define that for a property. So you have a property called one Olympic medal. You know somebody has won one or more Olympic medals. You know that it's either going to be gold, silver, or bronze. Uh, so you can define the entire property in this way. Um, <clears throat> by the way, has type and allows value are also semantic properties. They're what's known as special properties because they're predefined by the software. 
does that, yeah, does that make sense? Cool. Okay, so we, now we know how to store all the data. How do, what do we do with it? Uh, um, <clears throat> for that, there's a very useful parser function. You were asking about examples of parser functions. This is a good one. Um, it's called ask, uh, and it does uh, what's known as inline queries. Um, so this is the basic syntax. You, um, you can set the, um, the set the, of uh, pages you're looking for, and then you set information about, its, uh, uh, about the display. So what do we have here? We say we want everything in the category called countries that also has uh, the value of Europe for the property has continent. Um, and we say we want to display this in a table, <coughs> and, uh, and the, the label, the main label will be name, and then we also want to show the population for each country. And now I can't remember if I actually put a table together for what this would display. Oh, I didn't. Uh, that's too bad. Um, let me s well, okay, well, I'll get, I'll get to some demos later. Uh, it, it displays a table, displays a table of uh, country names and their populations. Um, you can also go to the page called Special Ask, which provides a nice interface for creating this sort of thing, uh, so you don't have to do it from scratch if you don't want to. Show is similar to ask, but it only displays the values for one page, so you can, if you just want to display the population of Luxembourg, this is the easiest way to do it. This will just display it on the screen. Uh, some more stuff about the ask format. Um, the first one I sort of explained, you know, located in Korea means it's, you know, anything with that value for that property. You can also have, uh, have uh, less than or, or greater than. Uh, for numbers, so show me sense anything with a value of a million or more, or maybe just over a million for population. Uh, the plus will just give you anything that has any property for that value. Uh, you can have this uh, this dot notation, which does sub queries, um, uh, for, uh, linked linked properties. Um, so it's anything that has a value of acted in that itself has a value, sorry, anything that has a property acted in pointing to a page that itself has a property called genre with the value comedy. Um, so acted in would have to be a property of type page, uh, and then, uh, you know, whether it's a, a movie, a TV show, or anything else, that in turn would have to have a, uh, a, uh, a property called genre with, with the value comedy. Um, uh, and then you can also add in, uh, add in um, categories within the query, uh, and then you can do ORs on the category names. Uh, that's not done very often, but you can do that too. Uh, and if you query on a category, it will also give you all the pages that are in subcategories of that category. Yeah, was there a question? Yeah. So we've been doing some more complex queries with the NOT operator, so NOT something. Yes. And what we're running into is that only works if all of your data actually has something set for that property. So if you've got a thousand pages and five of them are set to, you know, the value you're looking for, if the remaining 995 don't have anything for that property, they don't show up. Is there a workaround for that? Uh, yeah, right. I, I, I didn't put not in, I guess just because I, well, I copied this slide from somewhere else. No. That one didn't happen. <coughs> um, I, sh I should have put it, but it does have that problem, yes. Uh, there's a there's a workaround to that. You, if you're storing the data via template, um, what you can do is have use it, use if to say you know if it doesn't have a value, create some property called does not have value, that's, that sort of thing. Yes. So you put this as markup inside like some kind of a page. Yes, exactly. And then it essentially creates so when somebody visits that page, they will see the result of a query. Yes. You know, with possibly the additional formatting or something, so it will look as if somebody actually typed that page in into a wiki page. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. They'll have, they'll have no way of knowing that it's uh, dynamically generated, yeah. Um, 
And I'll, I'll hope to get to some examples of all of this. Um, okay, so query formats. Uh, I mentioned, uh, showed here that this was using the table format. Um, SMW comes with some, some fairly basic query formats. Um, there's list, which does a comma separated list. Uh, OL and UL do uh, numbered and unnumbered uh, 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 bulleted lists, respectively. And then this table. I guess there's a few others. Yeah, the long table and stuff. Uh, template is really nice. It lets you define a template that each row of data gets passed into. So you can do any sort of custom formatting. Um, and then there's some export formats um, that you can use to just export the data for use by, uh, you know, some presumably some some computer program that's uh, that's uh, getting the, extracting this data and using it for something. These are quite basic. There's a whole lot of other formats um, that are defined in other extensions. Most notably, semantic result formats and semantic maps. And we'll get to those in some uh, in some uh, demonstrations of them later. But I can do that now at this time. Um, concepts. This is a kind of an obscure semantic media wiki. Uh, I was going to say concept, but uh, thing. Um, it basically is a way to define a, a, a set of uh, pages that match a certain set of conditions. It's a lot like categories, uh, but it's you know dynamically constructed. Um, so you can create a, a, a concept called uh, Italian trumpet players if you want, um, and you you know you pass in you pass in all this uh, stuff. Uh, that together, and, and it, it takes the same um, format as an ask query does, and then together it defines a set of pages. Um, and then those can be used in a variety of ways. You can, you can then pass that in to another query, uh, just as you would with a category. Uh, and it's, it has specific uses for, uh, for forms for, and for watch lists and probably some other stuff. Okay, so NRA data, this is an interesting one. Um, there is some data that you can't store using this approach. Um, the main example is any table of values. If you have a, a, you know, a two-dimensional table of uh, values on your page, you can't just store that using semantic media wiki. Uh, so, okay, so, so a classic example is we have a recipe here. We want to make a salad, and so you know, it takes three tomatoes, two tablespoons of olive oil. How, do you, how can you store that semantically? Uh, so you, let's say somewhere else you want to make a query for all recipes that require more than one tablespoon of olive oil. How can you store that? This is a trick question. Uh, right, I mean the problem is, you, you know, you can say has ingredient tomatoes, has ingredient olive oil, but you can't associate the, the number or the unit with that other thing because uh, everything within Semantic Media Wiki just points, you know, it's supposed to originate from the main page that it's on, i.e. Uh, my salad recipe or something. So there's actually two ways to do this. Um, there's an extension called Semantic Internal Objects. Um, <clears throat> most of the extensions we'll get, I'll get to in the, in the next talk, but this one uh, 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 is I'm talking about now. Um, um, <clears throat> They're quite similar to one another. They both define a special parser function that um, that takes in all of this stuff and then creates uh, an, an internal object or a sub-object, depending on what you want to call it, um, that then has those values. So for the first one, it would define an, uh, an, an object that has uh, you know quantity two tablespoons ingredient olive oil and then is connected back to that recipe page, um, and it's the same thing for the second one. The only difference is that for set internal, the um, the object points to the recipe page, while for sub object the the recipe page points to the object, um, and uh, these are you know these are. Uh, easy to read, hopefully, examples, but actually it would be, again, it would be most likely be stored via a template. Um, 
So each row would have its own template, whether you know it, was, it could be called recipe row or something, uh, that would take in this stuff and then also uh, handle the display of, of it at the same time. I mean, handle both the storage and display. And uh, I should have had a, um, maybe I can just briefly do that now. Oops. Um, we, what we wanted to do was was do was do a query to um, to uh, to get the set of all uh, ingredients. Or what was it? Oh, it was the set of all recipes that have um, that have uh, more than one tablespoon of olive oil. So I would do if I if I were storing it the first way, I would do um, is Rogan recipe anything. Uh, and then I would do ingredient, oh, oops, ingredient olive oil and um, and has a quantity, quantity is greater than one, uh, greater than or equal to one. So this will actually show all the rows, not all the recipes, uh, but uh, Oh yeah, and then I also want to display the, the name of the recipe page. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Oh, probably can't see that. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, anyway, the, the key is that you, that you know about these approaches. Um, why are there two? Uh, it's because semantic internal objects has existed for a while, maybe two years now. Subobjects is relatively new. It's only been around for, I don't know, six months or, or less. Um, Subobject is most likely you know, the way of the future. Uh, at the moment, it still has some weaknesses. Um, um, semantic internal objects is better it's my biased opinion because I wrote semantic internal objects, but um, it's, it has better integration right now with other functionality like the external data extension, which we'll get to later. Um, but presumably, at some point, subobject will be able to do all the same stuff that uh, that semantic internal objects does now. Other functionality in semantic media wiki. Um, there's info, there's no good reason why it's in Semantic Media Wiki, but it's there. It, uh, it lets you display one of those little question marks that shows up on the page, and then you click on it, and it shows, shows a little uh, hovering thing um, with more information. Set recurring event is a useful one. Um, uh, it, uh, you know, you enter in information about the frequency of some event, and then it, uh, the start date and so forth, then it generates uh, uh, properties for all of the events that, um, that uh, correspond to that formula. So that's good for birthdays and weekly meetings and that sort of thing. Um, uh, there's declare, which is kind of weird. I don't know if anybody actually uses it. Um, it's a lot like set. You use it specifically for templates, but set works fine. Um, SMW doc is uh, is another sort of strange one in my opinion. Um, it displays documentation about any specific uh, parser function, I guess, or parameter. Or something. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you could do SMW doc, SMW doc to find out more information. No, it, it displays documentation about the parameters of the results format. So it's not oh format. yeah, that's right. That's right. Is it? It's only for that. It's only for. Yeah. For, okay. There is a okay. similar one in validator for parser functions. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's useful. And, and the nice thing about it is that it's, it's, uh, it's because it's now part of the MediaWiki code, it, it too has been translated into many languages. So it's useful, especially for non-English non speakers who can't read the uh, standard semantic MediaWiki documentation. Uh, further reading, um, yeah. We have uh, MediaWiki.org is a really is a great resource for everything MediaWiki related, uh, even though the organization of the site could be a little better. And then SemanticMediaWiki.org, I hope everyone is going to that and checking out all the cool stuff on that site. Um, so 
I, yeah, I guess that's it. Oh, okay. Well, that's worked out well. We have we have five minutes left. So, uh, if there's any questions or if anybody wants to see demos of any of this stuff, uh, yes. Two questions. Um, you said that Tsunami Media can export bulk data. Yes. Can it also import bulk data? It uh, depends on what you on how you want to do it. Um, the, the big question is what format you want the data to be in when it's imported. Uh, if you want everything to Cripples. be struck, uh, well, <clears throat> uh, but uh, what, how do you want it to look on the wiki page? Or the question, or do you not even want it to be on the wiki page? You also do you only want it to be stored. That was within. the second part of the question. Um, that can you know you said before we have filters. Uh, can we have functions on the filters? In other words, imagine uh, data being imported from, let's say, some scientific instruments. Right. And there is a format which does that, but the you know the, it's a mapping from you know the uncalibrated, let's say, calibrated data, and you say you know these are numbers between zero and hundred, but they're really voltages. You know. So uh, can right. we uh, you know could we import something and then have a filter? that, you know, with a function wrapped around it that says, here's what it's going to look like. And then every time somebody goes in and poof, you know, it shows the latest picture. Yeah. The data you have. Right. Uh, there's, there's, there's a number of different ways to do that. Uh, and actually, uh, data integration is going to be a, a, a component of a bunch of talks at, at this upcoming conference. I believe some, one person is, uh, at least one. Uh, I believe a bunch. Um, because the, 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 you know, it, a lot depends on, uh, on the nature of the data you want to import, whether you want to keep it externally or move it into the wiki. Um, uh, so, um, uh, yeah, there are, different, there, are different, uh, uh, there are a number of different options for that, depending on what you want the final outcome to look like. Uh, we'll get to some of those in the next talk. Um, um, I mean, you know. If it really is located elsewhere, and it's located already in an RDF triple store, I mean, that's sort of the whole promise of the semantic web in the first place, is you can do some sort of querying um, so, to so get everything. So you have in here, you could have a Sparkle, uh, sorry, a Sparkle query in here, which pulls data from someplace else. Yes, there are, uh, yes, there are <laughs> extensions that let you do that. There, there's actually more than one extension that defines a parser function called Sparkle that, uh, that uh, lets you just put in the syntax for a standard Sparkle query, and then you can query that wiki's own data that you're on as well as anything else that you want to query. Yeah, there are several extensions that allows you to use Sparkle queries to get data from either uh, within your uh, semantic media wiki triple store or some other triple store sources. And also there is a special uh, integration called Link Data Integration Framework that will do the data integration from different triple sources, including databases, and also some um, schema mapping or ontology transformation, you can think something like that. I think Will Smith will talk about that on Friday. Oh, thank you. Cool. Um, yeah, any other, any other questions? Any, you know, something you've been dying to know about MediaWiki? Yes? Yeah, the, the no. The Lua scripting thing, is, is right. there a roadmap available like that that people can look at? There's a, there's a page on MediaWiki. I don't, I don't know if it gets updated a lot. I think if you just do a search on like Lua MediaWiki, you'll find it. Um, as, as with a lot of Wikimedia projects, it's sort of, uh, it, they, they, you know, they don't do as good a job as they could of, of uh, you know, keeping the, the rest of the world updated on what's going on. Um, yeah, there'll be a, there'll be some talks about it at the upcoming Wikimania conference, which is in Washington D.C. by the way, uh, in July. So, uh, so I'm hoping to hear more about it then. Yeah. Same information about the uh, rich text editor. Yeah, visual editor. Yeah. You said that it will support everything. Everything meaning uh, wiki markup, right? Or yes. HTML as well. Or what? Oh, HTML? Uh, well, I'm guessing that at the very least it won't mess that up. 
That's the, that's the promise that, you know, it, it's the same with template calls. I believe it won't actually uh, let you edit template calls, at least not directly within the thing, but it, it at least it will keep them in some sort of form so that it knows, you know, uh, so basically so that uh, when, you, when you save a page, you're mostly guaranteed that, you know, weird things won't show up, um, you know, extra, extra line breaks or that sort of thing. Would it support tables as well? I would have to imagine. I'm, and, and I'm also guessing that that's probably their, their biggest single headache, but I don't know. And it's going to work with uh, semantic form prefect there? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would be great if, I, if everything could work together. Uh, cool. Well, I, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I guess I might as well show a brief demonstration or something. I guess that can wait until the next talk. We'll do all the cool, cool demonstrations then. So, yeah. Oops. I guess that's it.